After 10 years of fundraising, the Tom Prince Cancer Trust have just reached their target of £1 million. The family started the trust in memory of Portsmouth lad Tom, who died on the eve of his 16th birthday. And join us in the studio to tell us more, Tom's father Clinton, Prince and his sister Emma. Thank you so much for coming Hello. in. So if I start with you, Clinton, just tell me a little bit about Tom. What was he like and what kind of happened to him? Well, Tom was your, your average young lad, loved football, um, great little player, played for three teams, captain of two of them, uh, a lovely, caring boy, uh, kind natured. Uh, I think that reflects on his friends still keeping in contact, like 11 years on. Mm. Um, he was just you know, just a pleasant chap to be with, uh, just a bundle of joy. Big uh, smile. Big <laughs> smile, yeah, yeah, big smile. Um, yeah, it, it, just, it was just easy to get on with from birth to to the last days he was he was he was such a joy we were just yeah. blessed with him um and as i say his friends uh come around even to this day um and when we have the uh, they could do for tom in september they come out in their the, the numbers to support us uh and it's like almost like a, well it's like a reunion and that's with his, tom's friends and the parents so um no, it's, it's good it's very good There'll be lots of people watching who are familiar with Tom's story, but for those of the our viewers who don't know, Emma, could you just tell me what happened to him? Um, yeah, uh, he, he suffered from osteosarcoma, which is a really rare bone cancer. Um, it mainly affects like children and adolescents, um, which is particularly rubbish. Um, and it's really underfunded because it is quite rare, which mm. means that diagnosis happens quite late on. So unfortunately, the survival rate is quite low. Um, and I think that's what's kind of spurred us along, really. We wanted yeah. to make sure, now that, try to help other families not have to go through what we went through and try and try and propel the research forward. We were, we were chatting about it earlier. Um, surgery has improved a lot, but the clinical side of it just hasn't moved on in years. So in decades, actually, decades, yeah. yeah. So that's why um, we wanted to set the charity up and, and keep his memory alive. Mm. And you said one of the reasons there was so that other families out there don't mm. have to kind of experience what you had to go through. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, what kind of what was it like when you found out? Well, well it's such a rare cancer. The, the, the statistics say that like one doctor, a GP in his working lifetime, will come across one case mm. of osteosarcoma. So the time he recognises that the, the tumour's grown inside the body. And, and therefore, it, you know, you've lost a lot of time. Uh, by, with the Tom Prince Cancer Trust, I'm just mentioned osteosarcoma in the evening news and, and certain medias and word of mouth. That's got, you know, you know rebounding success in Portsmouth. People's heard of it now. Uh, so we want to make GPs aware that, you know, it, it, sometimes it's not just a sports injury. You know, maybe you have to look a little bit deeper. I think that's what it gets confused with because of the, uh, the age of the children affected. It's confused with growing pains or sport injuries or something like that. Um, yeah, and is so that what happened to Tom? It was just it was not quite picked up. It wasn't picked yeah, up in time. Up. As Dad said, GPs don't really know, don't really recognise it. No. Um, so that's kind of what happened. Um, by the time it was picked up, it, uh, the tumour was quite large. Um, Tom was really brave, went through lots of treatment, um, but it just wasn't quite enough. No, they no, put a brave fight, uh, fight on, but um, no, we talked when the, the um, tumour was actually discovered, it was 11 centimetres long in his mm -hmm. left arm. My gosh. Um, uh, I don't want to get into too much of the details, but it, um, he, he took every kind of step he could do to, to try and beat it. And every mm -hmm. time he'd done it, he, he didn't blame anybody. He didn't, he didn't want to kind of, he didn't get angry. He just wanted to, 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 to you know, get the cure, and that's what spurred us on. Mm -hmm. And his friends and our family to, to do what we've done. Um, the million pounds, as we always said, would go to research, and uh, research only into osteosarcoma. Um, you could look at different papers, and you, they, they, the numbers come up from 150 to 600 children a year get from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales get uh, diagnosed with osteosarcoma. So the numbers are small in clinical terms and trials, but for a, a family, it's devastating. Mm. Um, and we've read a few papers, and as, as Emma said, like the, the surgery side of it has come on leaps and bounds, different type of metals, and if they put an implant in the arm, that they can put a, a, a device in there to actually make the, the, the arm grow as, as the child gets older and the limb gets longer. But on the, 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 the um, cure side of it, like the, um, the, the, 
there's, there's nothing's moved in decades, and we, we've just got to stop that. We've got to we've got to try and yeah. even if we it, hope that the million pounds we raise actually helps take a step yeah. forward. We've um, been speaking to like the uh, University of Portsmouth yes. and a couple of other experts about where we can put this money. It's taken us 11 years yeah. to get here, and we're really excited about putting yeah. it in the proper yeah. place. Is um, it, I mean, it's an amazing feat to raise a million pounds. That's a lot of money. <laughs> how did yeah. you how did you go about it? Oh God, it varied from, uh, I've Jump thrown out of an aeroplane, you've thrown yourself out <laughs> the Spinnaker Tower. We um, just done a bike ride from Portsmouth to, uh, Brighton to Portsmouth last weekend. Yeah, it's been really varied, it's kind of been something for everyone I think. Um, it's brilliant when like, you pick up an email from a complete stranger that never met the family or yeah. mom, and they decided to wax their chest for the trust, <laughs> or bake cakes and sell them, or do all sorts of crazy things. Um, so it's been a, a, a long and winding road. With and we've had... Um, Le uh, emails of congratulations as far as from Holland, like oh, yeah. saying well, well done for raising a million pounds. Yeah. So it, it's, uh, I, I think we've got quite a wide base of people following Those us. Stories must bring you, you know, when oh, people yeah. say that, must bring you some some comfort yeah. as well. Our social media was kind of um, buzzing yeah. uh, on Tuesday last week when we kind of announced formally that we'd reached the million, and just people from we've had people that supported us from day one, like Tom's friends as well, yeah. and, and local people have supported us from day one and new people coming in uh, recently and there's just been so many nice messages mm. on our social media kind of mm. it's uh, congratulating us it's been a team effort though Everyone oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to thank um, everybody for that. So you've got this million pounds. You were saying that you're talking to universities. There's not kind of one body that looks into it. So how are you going to mm -hmm. make sure that it goes to the cause that you care about so much? Well, the, the thing is, is because it's such a rare cancer and there are people doing research into it, but it's, it's piecemeal. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a thing called a, you know, I'm not a scientist, but this is my brief <laughs> of it. Is yeah. That, you know, <laughs> every, every cancer has got a, a, a biomarker on it. Mm -hmm. And that means you've basically got a handle on what cancer it is, so therefore you can put the treatment in place, the delivery system to, to fight the cancer. Um, but without a biomarker, you're 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 in the, you're in the dark. Obviously so um, that doesn't have a biomarker. No, it makes it tricky. They've tried to find one, but even if this million pound goes towards, you know, getting the first building block, if mm -hmm. if we can do that and achieve that. And then maybe like a, a, repl a replica of the cell, so that you know people can work from it. Because where it's such a rare cancer, to try and get um, a specimen off of it, it's it, there's so few and far between. So you, you might have to get a, a model of the, the cell, so people can walk, work away from it, and try and you know get rather than one person studying it. You've got various um, establishments trying to do research into it. It's been uh, it's been an eye opener to see how um, fracturated is that the word? Um, like the research into it has been so far. Lots of great people doing lots of great things, but it's really disparate. And we're very strict on the fact that the money has to go to mm. Oscar Sarcoma research because it's so underfunded. And the aim we think is to try and. Um, get all of the people to kind of work together. We need sample banks, they all need to be yeah. linked up. Mm. Um, but talking to certain people, it's really exciting about what could possibly be done and not even just trying to take a step further forward in the research, but trying to actually encourage the next generation of osteosarcoma experts because, because it's underfunded, it's under-researched. So you need to actually entice people in to look into mm. the disease, which is something we weren't expecting. Um, we might have to recruit people from the other side of the world to take this on. It's been a real eye opener. Um, but that's that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> yeah. Well it sounds like the money is much needed mm -hmm. and hopefully will make a big difference in yeah. looking into this. Clinton Emma, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. Me today. Thank you.